Hi, and welcome to Jimmy's Guide to Doodling over the video in Blender. This tutorial is going to be aimed at people with no experience with Blender, and it'll take you from start to finish in creating your own doodled video. A little info on Blender first. You can do a lot of things, including 3D modeling and animating and visual effects and so on. It has a lot of depth, but it also means it can be pretty complex. But it's free and it's pretty awesome. First thing to do before we start to get the best performance is to convert your video into an image sequence. So instead of a video file like this, it's an image of each frame like this. So let's start. Open the video editing tab and then locate your video and then drag it into the timeline. Now we need to adjust the timeline to match our video. So click the end arrow and it will show the amount of frames for this video. It says 333. So we'll set the end from 250 to 333. Then now we need to set the resolution. This video I'm using is 1280 by 720, so that's what I'll set. And then we set the frame rate. I know that the video is 25 frames per second, so I'll just leave that here. And now choose the save destination. And since JPEGs are usually smaller, I'll choose JPEG and leave the defaults. For some reason, Blender sets some sort of color filter by default, so I'll show you how to disable it. Go to render properties, scroll down to color management, and change view transform from filmic to standard. Now we're ready to export. I'll double check our settings and now we can go up to the render menu and click render animation. And importantly, we need to remove the video before we proceed by clicking the video and pressing delete or right click delete. Now we can head back to the layout tab to set up the scene for animation. Delete the default cube by clicking the cube and pressing the delete button or right click delete. Now we reset the camera so it's in a better position. First select the camera and zero out all the transform and rotation values. And then make the camera look towards the center of the scene by setting X rotation to 90 and Y location to minus 10. Now the camera's in a good position, we'll set up the camera to show our video. First click the camera icon at the top right of the viewport. This shows the view of the camera. Then click the camera in the project hierarchy top right if it's not already selected and go to the camera properties and scroll down and enable and expand background images. And then click the add image button, select movie clip as the background source and then click the open button and navigate to where you saved your image sequence and select and open the first image in the sequence. Then change the alpha to 100%. Now you should have your video as the background so we can start setting up Grease Pencil, Blender's drawing tools. So first we add the Grease Pencil object by going to add in the top left of the viewport. Select Grease Pencil and then Blank. And with the Grease Pencil object still selected in the left of the viewport, change Object Mode to Draw. Go to Grease Pencil Properties and create a layer by clicking the New Layer button and now click on the Materials tab. And click the plus icon to create an empty material slot and then click the New button to create your material. A material includes details like the color, line type and the fill. For this tutorial we'll only use a black stroke so we can just leave this for now. Now I'll remove the pressure sensitivity and make the strength to 100%. This will create a consistent, fully opaque black line. To adjust the thickness, we set the radius at the top, or while your cursor is in the viewport, press F and then move your mouse. Now we need to open the Grease Pencil Dope Sheet by clicking the Editor Type button in the top left of the bottom panel, and then selecting Grease Pencil in the drop down next to it, then expand the summary. Now when we draw, we'll see that a new keyframe is added. Before we get into drawing, I'll do a brief overview of what you'll likely need when you're drawing. Drawing tools are on your left, so you've got the draw tool, fill and erase. And in the viewport, you can pan by shift middle clicking and to zoom, control middle clicking and moving the mouse up or down. Or you can use the mouse scroll wheel. Similarly, you can use the icons in the upper right of the viewport. You can use the same middle click or scroll controls for the view in the dope sheet as well. And now we can actually start drawing. Then to draw the next frame, we can move the playhead with the mouse or press left and right cursor keys, then draw. And again, I'll press the right key to go to the next frame. So the first bit is done, and we can scrub the playhead to check our animation, or you can press the spacebar to play the animation. You'll notice that the first keyframe is held or frozen for the entire start. So to get rid of that, we add an empty keyframe before our first keyframe. First, make sure that your layer is highlighted green, which means it's selected, then move the playhead to the location where you want the keyframe and right click and choose insert keyframes. Now that we've completed the first line, I'll create a new layer to help organize things. So I'll click the plus icon above the dope sheet and a new layer is created. 
then I'll lock the previous layer from edits. This just prevents me from accidentally editing something I want to. Now I can draw the next bit. And again, I'll add a blank keyframe at the beginning, then create a new layer and then lock the old one. And now I'll just repeat the previous steps for the rest of the animation. So now we've got our mostly completed masterpiece, I'll go through some other tools and techniques that might help you out. First are the sculpt tools, which you can access by changing from draw mode to sculpt mode at the top left of the viewport. You can play with the other sculpt tools yourself, but I'll show you how we can use a grab tool to make the in-between frames. So if we go to this part of the animation, you'll see it's a pretty big step from this frame to the next. So I'll add a keyframe in between so it looks a bit smoother. To do this with the grab tool, First we need to make sure the layer is unlocked. Then we need to duplicate the final keyframe and place it at the end. Now we've got two keyframes where it says doodling. Now move the playhead to the second last keyframe and we can edit it so the text is smaller. First I'll increase the radius of the tool by pressing F and then start to squish it in. So now it looks a little smoother instead of jumping from the small line to the big text. And if you want to be extra fancy, we can duplicate the end keyframe again, and then we can start smearing this one out, which gives it a little bounce back effect. And lastly, I'll go through the edit mode. In Blender, each stroke is made up of points. So in the edit mode, it allows you to have accurate control over those points. To get to the edit mode, we'll change from sculpt mode to edit mode. Then I'll use it to shift the whole in text, so it's a little higher. First, I'll enable the layer and lock the other one and then I can click drag to create a box over the text. Choose the move tool in the left toolbar and drag the handles to move the text. In edit mode, you can also scale and rotate. Now that we're done, we can export our video. First, go to the output properties in the right panel. Since we set our video settings earlier inside the video editing tab to convert our video, we don't need to change the video settings. We will need to change the output though. So select a different location for your video and change the file format to FFmpeg. Expand the encoding and change the container option to MPEG4. Leave the video codec as H.264 and since it's a high quality animation, I'll set the quality to high. Before you render our final video, we'll render a single frame to make sure it looks alright. So head up to the render menu and click render image. What you'll see is the text but no background. To fix this, first we need to switch off the grey background colour by going into render properties in the right panel, go down to film and enable the transparent option. And if we render again, we'll see the background is gone but still no video. This is because we need to add the video in the final composite. So to do so, we go into the compositing tab up top, enable the use modes option in the toolbar below, then go to add input movie clip and then add colour alpha over. Go to the movie clip node and click the bottom left icon to show the previous videos you've loaded, then select the video. Now we hook up the image property of the movie clip to the top image property of alpha over and the image property of render layers to the bottom image property of alpha over. Lastly, we link the image property to alpha over to the image property of the composite node. Basically, all this is doing is grabbing the doodle we've drawn and overlaying it on top of the background video and then using that as our final render. Now when we test render an image, we'll see the correct output. And now that we've confirmed it looks all right, we can render the animation. And you're done. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments or would like more tutorials, let me know in the comments. Stay safe and now go wash your hands.